I don't know if you can hear the purr. Is that a purr? Do you make biscuits? It's a quiet purr this morning. He's usually much louder. Anyway, that's Mowgli and NF. Anyway. So, three really shitty choices. <laughs> that's what it all boils down to. Either a surgery that Caroline probably wouldn't survive, but that wasn't the problem for me. The problem was if she would be suffering after the fact. The second option was radiation and chemo, which we know cats are, and dogs, I mean, experience it much differently than humans do. I think when we say chemo and radiation, most humans are like, oh God, I wouldn't put her through that. That wasn't the point either. And that could potentially buy her three, six, nine months with a combination of therapies. And it would just mean multiple trips to the vet, a couple of hours each time while she gets an infusion, blah, blah, blah. And then the third option, which was to do nothing um, and to enter palliative care. So the real moment where I felt this is right, I kept getting asked, well, what does she want? Which I think is an unfair question, or I did. I thought it was an unfair question. I thought it was, you know, asking me to put aside my feelings, my history, my desires in the moment in order to better communicate with her, for lack of a better word, or, or to use what is one of my strengths if it was somebody else's cat, not mine. But that's impossible. It's impossible because of history, connection, love, relationship. Ironically, it's impossible anyway. But if I boiled it down, what she would want would be nothing in the way that she just wants her spot. That's what I kept saying. She wants her spot. Whether her spot is in her bed under the dining room table or her spot on the couch or her spot in the world. She just wants her spot. And then there was suddenly the obvious choice, which was um, the third choice, nothing. Which is so painful for me because I'm a fixer by trade, I guess. I don't excel at doing nothing. I don't excel at sitting still, which is why like this morning, I just spent a half hour trying to find my spot, which thankfully I found. And remember, instead of buying her three, six, nine months, we're not talking about months. We're talking about days, weeks, maybe a month, maybe. But we're already starting to see a little discomfort that we're <clears throat> working on mitigating. But that's what she wants. She wants her spot. And that's what we're going to give her. Mina and I talked about it. I think she still sees some merit in the in the um in the other options, but but I think she understands um what what I see and what I know. This whole thing is just, it's just cruel, man. It's just having to take that, that crazy turn in awareness and having to fight through the anger and the, the whatever, the injustice of it, and the, you know, all that. And to find even a measure of peace in, in a decision. And here we are, Christmas morning. My mom died of pancreatic cancer in 2016. It would have been her birthday on the 19th. Minu's soulmate, Barry, died in 2016, right about 
last week. I mean, that was crazy. I mean, you want to push two humans to their absolute limit. Um, we were madly dashing back and forth across the country to tend to these two beings who who were everything to us. What is it now? Seven years. Wow. Seven years. Seven birthdays. And I still... The, the word pancreatic comes out of my mouth like it's razor blades. And isn't it ridiculous that this would be... I, you know, so this is what we got. This is what we got. Caroline's birthday, or the birthday I gave her, was, I believe, right around my birthday. April 28th is my birthday. And I think her birthday would have been right around there. Made sense. I mean, it tracked. Anyway, she's not going to see that birthday. So she's not going to turn 16. And, and it's going to be really, really hard to just watch to appreciate the moments that we have, to moderate any pain or discomfort along the way, keep her eating and drinking as long as she wants to, to have our absolutely fabulous house call, euthanasia vet on call, something I've learned over the years, you never want to be caught without that person ready to go whenever you say go. To prepare the home, keep it just absolutely Christmas morning peaceful, as many hours of the day and many days of the week and however many weeks we got. It's so important to keep things energetically just humming along. No curveballs, nobody Nobody disrupt that. And, make, and just make it all about her now. I found myself videoing her drinking water and eating, taking pictures of her on the couch. A part of you just does that out of, like, I don't want to miss moments because I've missed a lot of moments with others. And I used to think, oh, how silly it is to document these things and how cheap it is to document these things. But, you know, I'm doing this. So many things that I already feel stupid about. I feel stupid being a teacher and being a facilitator in grief support groups and to absolutely have missed it in myself missed the pushback, the push away, missed the moments of absolute selfishness and anticipatory blah, blah. The amount of times I walked away knowing what I must know now. On one hand, you go, well, you, we're always going to be students of grief. We're never going to as Stephanie would say, get to the top of Grief Mountain. Never going to work. The only success we will ever have, and success is a really subjective word in this instance, but the only, the only prayer that we have as moments of grieving pile up in our lives, inevitably as we get older, is to incorporate life and death, love and loss.
So if I sit here and I start to cry, that's okay. Because 10 minutes from now, I'll be feeding her breakfast and I'll be really happy that she's eating. I'll take a moment and enjoy the presence of this boy. Even though one day I'll probably have to do it again. I mean, he's only four, but, and who knows? Maybe I've got a shorter time than he does. I don't know. But the truth is that sitting with this today, right now, it is so true that when you grieve one, you grieve them all. And knowing that in this weak time span, mom's birthday, Barry's passing, and now this feels like it'll break me in half. It'll break me new in half, but it won't. We, we will, we have in the past even 24 hours, settled into what this is and who we are. We are guardians, parents, stewards, protectors. Loving partners. And uh, I'll try to keep as current as I can. Hopefully not for 20 minutes each time, but I'm just sad and powerless. And uh, at least I know the warnings now. If I snap, if I yell, none of those things are who I am. So I got to remember, you can't prevent those things from happening, but you can ask forgiveness. You can forgive yourself and you can recenter. And if you're paying attention, you can do that in moments. And that's what this is all about. It's all about moments. So no surgery, no chemo. We sit with it. We sit with her. We keep her comfortable. And we look for that moment. That moment when when having her spot is no longer. No longer enough. And then she gets to, surrounded by everyone, leave the spot. 